What up Fight World, it's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Well, it looks like things keep getting better and better for people like myself, for other channels, media writers, who simply tell the truth, and they're just honest. Now, Andre Ward made his ring return, and the ratings came back. It averaged 1.064 million viewers on HBO March 26th. Now, I was fortunate enough to cover it, and I had the time of my life. I had a great time. A lot of celebrities were in the house. You had Steph Curry of the Warriors, Draymond Green, Marshawn Lynch. Just th These are all champions right, that I'm talking about, right? Michael B. Jordan of Creed, great movie if you haven't seen it. You had a ton of people. Andres Funfara, I seen him. Didn't get a chance to interview him. Amir Khan came out for his stable mate. Berto was there. You had Roy Jones obviously calling the fight. You had a ton of names. Sergey Kovalev, he was in there getting booed. Um, just a ton of people who came out to support the event. So shout out to Rock Nation Sports made events for a successful pairing with HBO. Now, when it comes to Andre Ward, there's a lot of misconceptions, and I'm going to talk about them in this. With this average, it it puts a puts to bed a lot of the jargon that you hear, a lot of the falsehoods that you hear in the media. Andre Ward, he can't sell out his mother's basement in Oakland, and he can't sell out Sergey Kovalev's living room, and just, just dumb stuff. This proves that is not true. The crowd, there was over 8,000 people in the crowd in attendance. And we, we're talking about a guy in Sullivan Barrera who speaks a little bit of English, it's definitely not his first language and he's not a big draw he's not even with a giant promoter in in the grand scheme of things when you look at guys like top rank and golden boy he's with main events and you know what i mean he hasn't had that exposure like a kovalev even or canelo triple g he hasn't been getting those types of high profile fights leading up to this so to me that is a critical success that ward versus barrera averaged 1.064 million views right because you look at the undercard even it was joseph jojo diaz that was his hbo ring debut so a lot of people i know a lot of my socal uh boxing fam had seen him but he hadn't been televised on hbo before so it's not like you had the like star power like when floyd mayweather was doing some of his like mayweather victor ortiz he had canelo on the undercard you know what i mean so that was a pay-per-view event and that helps it because Canelo was a rising star. People heard about him, had seen him, and he had that type of backing. So Ward didn't have that. He had Jojo Diaz and Jason Velez. Neither one of them, again, that was Jojo Diaz's first, very first HBO debut. And Jason Velez, I believe, was even coming off of a loss. And he's not a big commodity. So that's good. These are good numbers as far as I'm concerned. And this card peaked. The Ward Barrera fight peaked at 1.152 million viewers. So again, there, there's really nothing that anybody could say at this point regarding Ward's star power, his drawing power, despite what articles you read. It's just there's too many excuses out there, and we gotta find a way to put them to bed. Like if you listen to all the things that the critics, the media, look what people write, even myself. When I'm writing on my website, when I'm doing these videos, listen to what I say and then come back later on and tell me if I say something different. And that's what you get with a lot of this, there's a lot of this in boxing where they'll say things like, if I use your logic regarding Andre Ward, then nobody can doubt that this is a success. One point over a million, basically over a million views. Reason being is they said Ward was past his peak, right? So if he's past his peak, why is he doing over a million? They said, oh, this is inactive bore Ward. Ward's boring. Ward's just so inactive. He fights like one time every four years. He's boring and inactive. So if he's that inactive, how is an inactive fighter drawing over a million views? And ESPN didn't come out to cover the fight. Uh, huge backing. Dan Rayfield was not there, right? So you didn't even have the full support of some of the biggest media that covers boxing, ESPN, big vehicle. But I guess they only give Ronda Rousey Fighter of the Year awards, even though she got knocked out that same year. But 
whatever. You didn't have the backing of certain media, right? And Andre Ward talked about that when he was shadow boxing. He said, some of y'all, I'll play the clip. Just how I like it. No wonder why I stay home. Why oh, you got that look on your face, man? You look focused. I can't fail. They're not gonna give me a pass if I fail. Oh yeah. Guarantee. I know everybody that comes to the fight don't want me to win. That's the reality of it. That's what motivates me. They, they talked about him being inactive. He came in and he won the fight. You had uh, called him a, you called him a diva before. I want to know, what do you think about Andre Ward overall? <clears throat> He's a great boxer, uh, but I, I think that um, this is the student. They're trying to match him against the teachers, Kovalev and Golovkin. That's just an impossible task. He didn't look like he could handle those guys today. He was able to handle uh, a young man with 17 fights, but uh, it's a different story moving up to the, to the elite guys. We have a lot of work to do. We're going to be in a position, hopefully, in the next year, year and a half, to challenge again. And when we do, uh, hopefully, we'll do better. So you don't think uh, Ward is ready for Kovalev? Absolutely not. <laughs> the shot that he was getting hit by by uh, by Sully today, uh, Kovalev was destroying him from shots. Uh, I think that uh, either he gets two or three more fights to sharpen up. Now, mind you, um, the Andre Ward that fought let's just say uh, five years ago, six years ago, with the Super Six, it's a different guy that, that's today. Kovalev is at the top of his game. Uh, it would be impossible to, uh, for me to think that uh, he has, has a, even a slight chance against Kovalev. That's right. But whether you, do right. It, whether you do it or not, I still love y'all. No, no hard feelings. I understand how it go. It's okay. All the young fighters out there, it ain't gonna always be easy. It ain't gonna always be easy. It's what you persevere through, it's what you persevere through. It's what you come out of, that's what makes you. The more they right, the more they fuel. They just throwing gasoline on them. The more they right, they just fuel, fuel, fuel. I know it's certain riders that didn't get on the call on purpose. The media stuff, I know it's certain websites that won't cover me on purpose. It's okay. Stay free. I got no, no hard feelings. That's y'all. You don't have to do it. I just know though. That's what motivates me. Andre Ward, he's more peligroso. Now, so without the star power and the backing of some of the most powerful media that covers boxing, like ESPN, for whatever reason, they didn't send anybody out, right? Even though when I went to Denver, Andre War was there also. He was covering, he was doing commentary. But when I went to Denver last year for Brandon Reels versus Mike Alvarado 3, and there was no celebrities really in the house other than Team Robert Garcia, Brandon Rios and Alvarado's camp, right? It was just, we were in Denver. No big celebrities, no Michael B. Jordans and sports athletes and Steph Curry. There was nobody out there, right? Other than the top-ranked staff and pretty much the camps. And uh, Ward was ca calling the fight, right? And Dan Rayfield made it out to that fight because I seen him, you know what I'm saying? So you can make it out to that fight, which turned out to be a total dud because Alvarado didn't look like he was in, in competition shape and he ended up retiring on the stool. 
but ESPN can make it out to that, but it couldn't make it out to this, which was the only thing going on in the fighting world. There was no UFC cards that I know of, no other boxing fights conflicting. Like when I covered Ward's last fight last year, he was competing with Hassan Indom versus David Lemieux over in Canada, as well as an even bigger fight in the States, Broner versus Porter. It happened that same day, June 20th, because I remember I couldn't watch Broner. I was looking forward to Broner and Porter. I couldn't watch it because I was covering Paul Smith versus Andre Ward. So without the backing of a media like ESPN, he drew these types of numbers, right? So, I mean, there's nothing else you could say. And you got to keep in mind this. These are the facts, people. There were no boxing or UFC or any other fighting sports. But Ward Barrera, that card did have to compete with something big in the sports world. The NCAA March Madness College Basketball Tournament was on free TV, CBS. And it was uh, simultaneously airing. And that did a rating of 11.6 million because it's it's college basketball, March Madness. People go crazy for it. You know what I mean? Spring. Um, and this was pretty much to show who advances to the to the next level, to the finals. So that's something, another obstacle that Ward had to compete with. Like, And that's with anybody. If, if there's a boxing event and there's a, a UFC card on, then both people will suffer. If there's two boxing events, if there's boxing and um, the Olympics or anything like that, anytime you have to compete with something major like the NBA Finals or even golf finals, I'm sure, could falter or, or change the numbers, if you will, of the cable views. Because some people are like, I want to see who who's going into the final four, right? So that's another obstacle or hurdle that Andre Ward had to overcome. So not just the people like ESPN not showing up, not just the fact that he's been inactive. And, and again, stuff like that doesn't make sense because if he's so inactive, he shouldn't have been doing these types of numbers, right? If he's inactive, like you guys say. And then on top of that, March Madness, the final four NCAA. Now, just to put salt in the wound and add insult to injury, I'm going to bring some more facts out for you. And I know the detractors, the people who hate Ward, they're not going to like it because that's that's like holy water to a vampire. They hate facts. No, facts. No. So let me give you guys some facts, right? Now, this is a quick one. There's a lot of people that the thing is, when there's a certain narrative in boxing for fighters that a certain fan doesn't like, let's say an Andre Ward, you just hate him. What they do is they try to, no matter what you do, you have to live and die by that stigma, whatever they place on you. If you're a runner, no matter what fight you're in, you're always a runner. Like Floyd Mayweather gets it too. Oh, he ran. He ran. So even when he's fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe versus Canelo or Cotto or Maidana in the first fight, he still ran because that's what you want to go with. Same thing with Ward. He's Andre Bohr. He's so boring. He's inactive. So even though he fought more frequently than Pacquiao's last fight, right? He fought in June 20th last year, and then he also fought in March 26th. And Pacquiao's next fight is not until April 9th. They still want to keep that narrative that, oh, he's so inactive. He's boring. And the funny thing is this. Since people say, oh, that, that Ward Barrera was so boring. Here's what Manny Pacquiao tweeted during the Ward Barrera HBO telecast. Good fight, HBO boxing, hashtag Ward Barrera. So Pacquiao was watching it. He was enjoying it. And Pacquiao is a legend in the sport. And he's, he's definitely somebody who is known for having a fan-friendly style. So, again, some people say, oh, you, it's only for people who like slick fighters and runners and stuff like that. Pacquiao, that's not his MO. And he was enjoying the fight, just like I was at press row. Now, one more thing before I get out of here, because I know, again, facts are your worst nightmare. When it comes to Ward, I know there's still going to be some people out there, even though I provided all these facts in the video, that are still going to say, oh, Ward Barrera, it barely did over a million. <laughs> Those are silly numbers. Well, the joke is on you, because I have some more numbers for you. And we can compare. So inactive Ward did 1.064 million cable views whilst competing with NCAA tournament, which is going to establish who advances, right? He's inactive Ward. Terrence Crawford, last fight versus Hank Lundy, averaged 982,000. Didn't crack over a million. Terrence Crawford, hell of a fighter, an American champion, has fought more frequently than Andre Ward. 
also on HBO, didn't crack a million, right? Let's keep going. Lucas Matisse, everybody looked, everybody likes Lucas Matisse. He's the machine. He's an action-packed fighter, right? Let's look at his last fight versus Victor Postal, a fight for the WBC title, right? For the vacant title, vacated by Danny Garcia. See, and this is where it pays to know your boxing. That was for a vacant WBC 140-pound title. And again, Lucas Matisse has big fight experience with Zab Judah, Devin Alexander. He's been in there with Lamont Peterson, Danny Garcia. The Danny Garcia fight was on a Floyd Mayweather Canelo blockbuster undercard. You know what I mean? And a lot of people were excited for that. So Matisse has had fun fights. His fight with John Molina Jr., fight of the year. But in his very last fight with Victor Postal, which was an HBO Boxing After Dark telecast, it averaged, Matisse Postal averaged 642,000 viewers. That's well under what Ward did with Barrera. And Lucas, I thought he's the action star, right? So we had Terrence Crawford, who's fighting more frequently, and also Lucas Matisse fighting more frequently. And they both did under what Ward Barrera did. Now, finally, let's take a look at the heavyweight division. On HBO, you had Tyson Fury versus Vladimir Klitschko in Germany. And it averaged 1.038 million views. Now, the only thing you could say, this fight did take place in Germany. So it came on maybe about 5 p.m., 4 or 5 p.m., my time, Pacific Standard Time. So a little bit earlier than Ward Barrera. But Tyson Fury versus Vladimir Klitschko was a game. You, you First of all, you had Tyson Fury who was trash talking, wearing Batman suits and stuff and hyping up the fight. It was a heavyweight fight and it was not competing with the NCAA tournament at the same time. And it happened a little bit early and it did 1.038 million, which is under the average that Ward Barrera did. Now, ESPN didn't want to cover Ward versus Barrera, but a simple Google search will show you that Dan Rayfield of ESPN, he wrote an article, and the title is Klitschko Fury Draws Strong U.S. Audience. So, I just went over it. Let me let me do it again. Klitschko Fury averages 1.038 million. Ward Barrera averages 1.064 million, which is clearly the higher number. And there's article written and the title is Klitschko Fury Draws Strong U.S. Audience. So let me get this straight. Klitschko Fury, when you're writing about that fight, which did under what Ward Barrera did, you put for the headliner for the title, Klitschko Fury Draws Strong U.S. Audience. But Ward and Barrera on HBO did better numbers, did higher ratings than Klitschko Fury. And you simply just put for the headliner what it did. There's no extra indications there's no extra verbiage it's just war barrera does it's almost like you're mad that it did better than you anticipated that it hit over a million views and that is simple media tricks right if it's something they want to write about or somebody they don't mind giving credit to then they're going to use all the the best vocabulary words that they possibly can draw a strong u.s audience but if it's andre ward you're simply going to say it. So they want to broadcast your failures, but whisper your successes. If Andre Ward was in the headlines because he was dealing with Goosen, I guarantee you Dan Rayfield and other writers like him would use a bunch of words. Like Andre Ward drags promoter through legal, long, strenuous battle. But when he does something good, like hits over a million buys and you didn't even cover his fight, right? You just simply put it. And I think I've made my point. I rest my case. Just want you guys to see how the media are the king of spin doctors. And that's really all I got to say. Shout out to Ward and Rock Nation. They did their thing. They hit their numbers. And it's on to the next one. And that's really all I got to say. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Share the video. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.